Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. It has been a frantic couple weeks here with everything being thrown at the wall by Congress to see what will stick. And in this process, although I've been stupid busy, <laughs> I have noticed that there are a lot of people that are blindly throwing their support behind red flag laws, extreme risk protection orders, extreme risk prevention orders, gun safety orders, they're called a multitude of things, but they are all the same thing. And what that is, is the single most dangerous risk to the United States Constitution. It violates a plethora, that's a Scrabble word, a plethora of your rights, our rights, rights that are not given to us by anybody sitting at the Capitol. We have these rights when we are born. What I want this video to do is to explain to people how many rights red flag laws violate. I want you to take the word gun or firearm out of what red flag does and imp import the word house, your, ho your home, your car. And if you wouldn't go for somebody taking your car or your house this easy, why should they take something that is protected and acknowledged in the United States Constitution versus something that's not? Meaning my right, your right to keep and bear arms is an enshrined right in the U.S. Constitution. You don't have a right to own a house. You don't have the right to own a car. Facts schmacks. All right, I, I wrote them down because I often will get so angry I'll forget one or two. But let's start at the top, the First Amendment. Red flag laws violate your freedom of speech. Why? Because I can be talking with one of y'all at a, at, a, at, a, at a parking lot, at, at a church, at a grocery store, whatever. We could be talking about guns. Did you see this new gun that came out? Hey, I have this one and this one. And some weak, meager puddle of a human being with no spine or backbone can overhear us and feel scared and threatened because they're the problem, not us. Well, they can just call law enforcement and say, hey, these people, this person, I heard them talking about guns and I think they're a threat to themselves or others. I think they're going to do something bad. Well, law enforcement can then go get a red flag order or attempt to. It's that simple, guys and gals. And people don't understand that. For those who like to carry openly, you could be around another weak, meager, shallow person who doesn't have any intestinal fortitude. And they can see you open carrying and call the police and say, I'm scared. I feel I'm, like I'm in danger. And the police can seek a red flag on you. If you're a concealed carrier and your cover garment exposes your firearm, same scenario, guys. That's how easy it is where someone can get a red flag. But it's not just limited to that. There's more. What if you had a neighbor who is of a different persuasion than you, a different sexual preference than you, or a different political preference than you. And you put up a sign that makes them so mad they want to scream at the stars, because we all know what that's like. I mean, we see it all over this country now. They can do the same thing. It's just that easy. So it violates the First Amendment, your right to free speech. It also violates the Second Amendment. That's obvious. They take your guns. They're looking to disarm you. And again, I will say that every state has on the books two laws. One is to force people if need be, but to get people who are in crisis treatment. They can do it with or without their, their consent. If somebody's having that difficult of a time, they can get treated. The other one are restraining orders. Uh, if you follow under the domestic uh, statutes and you are placed in fear for your life, those laws are on the books already. The red flag does nothing that those two don't other than take your guns, violate your rights. Second Amendment. It also violates your Fourth Amendment because one would argue that kicking in your door under the cover of night because you were talking about guns with your friend and overheard by a little wuss of a person and them taking your stuff is an unreasonable search and seizure. The Fifth Amendment is violated because it violates your right to due process of law. But Jared, you get to have a hearing after the fact. And that's not how due process works, guys and gals. A right delayed is a right denied, period, point blank. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, but we have to do something. 
no, not not like this. You you, you have certain rights that must be followed. That's due process. Everybody gets the same rights, the same process regarding uh, law. That's the process of law. It also, in the Fifth Amendment, it would violate your take, the takings clause. Why? Because the government is taking your items without compensation. You might not ever get them back. Okay? That's a big question. Some states, they don't know. Uh, we might not ever give them back. They might destroy them. Fifth Amendment. Sixth Amendment, you have a right to a trial. You don't get a trial. It's a simple ex parte hearing. But the due process I just talked about, yeah, it's violated because of an ex parte hearing as well. An ex parte hearing is a secret meeting. That's what ex parte means. You don't get to go to it. You don't even know that they're talking about this. You don't even know that they're lodging these complaints against you. You, sir or ma'am, are going to be met with the force of the government, the neo-Nazi regime we live under, because someone had some, some fears or they alleged something. And you don't get to lose your rights because of an alleged complaint. You just can't come, go into a trial and say, yeah, I heard somebody on Twitter say that he did it. That ain't gonna fly. That's gonna be stricken. So, but it, why should it work at, at disarming the public? It wouldn't work to, to, to dehome you, right? Oh, I heard that person walks around naked in their home and, and I'm afraid of naked people, so they should be stripped of their home. They should be stripped of their property. Doesn't make sense, right? Nobody would go for that. You don't get to address your, your accusers. They go to the police, they go to a judge in secret, Boom, next thing you know, you are stripped of your rights because of an allegation. You're not informed of charges. You don't get to talk to your attorney before the state or the government takes action against you. It's just not how it's supposed to happen, guys and gals. And we don't change things on emotion. There's no jury trial guaranteed in, the, in, in this thing before they take action. You will have to be found guilty. You have to be convicted before you lose rights in this country. You just don't say, I don't like them too bad and you're going to lose them. That's just not the way. I don't care if half the country thinks that way. I don't care if half the country is deranged and mentally challenged. Don't care. That's just, we don't change the fundamental structure of this country because people have feelings. It's not how it works. So that's the sixth and seventh. Uh, the eighth, uh, excessive fines and stuff like that. One could argue that taking my uh, firearms collection, if I have a, say I have a lot of collectibles, a lot of antiques, it's really, really valuable. One can say taking those and possibly destroying them and never giving them back would violate that as well. It's it's amazing how many of our rights are violated under this, oh, we just got to do something. And 90% of the people who say that they're for them, I'd say even 98% of the people who are for them don't know about this. And that includes people in Congress, which is why I say when you we need to call these people and tell them this stuff because most of them aren't reading these bills. Most of them don't even know what's in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, let's be honest. You think AOC knows what's the fifth, what the Fifth Amendment is? You think AOC knows what the Sixth Amendment is? You think Tlaib knows anything about the Fourth Amendment? <laughs> no, let's be realistic. Guys and gals, that is how dangerous red flag laws are. Please share this amongst everyone. Whether it's a Democrat who's for them or a Republican who's not, make sure they know why these are the biggest danger to the United States Constitution. If this goes through, guys and gals, like it has in 19 states already, if this goes through, there's nothing else. I mean, the Second Amendment is the one thing that keeps this country the way it is. Yeah, we faltered. We've fallen some. But if we didn't have the right to keep and bear arms, if we didn't have the right to protect ourselves from all enemies, foreign and domestic, I've taken that oath and it's not changing. But if we don't have that, Think about what would happen and how fast it would. Just a early morning video that I wanted to get out there. I've wanted to say this stuff for a couple days, but it's just been fast and furious with the videos. Guys and gals, check the channel back multiple times a day. I am putting up information as fast as I can. Uh, and uh, with your help, I can get it out there. Like the videos and share it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we're almost at 490,000 subscribers. I never thought that was even... I mean, that wasn't even a dream because I never thought it would happen. We're almost there. Please subscribe if you haven't already. 500,000 is, I mean, I can reach out and touch it and I never I never thought that would happen. It's very humbling to think about that. Oh, man, half a million people is amazing. And with you guys and gals, I can get there and I owe it all to you. And the more people we get in this growing freedom family, the better we're going to be because we're all going to be on the same page, the same boat rowing the same direction. So until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. I will see you in the next one. Take care.